So hello my dear students and learners. In the series of data structures and algorithm, today I am going to discuss how to count the total number of nodes present in a single linked list. Okay. So whenever you are going to implement the count function for a single linked list, you may have to face two kind of situation. Okay. So case number one is suppose the list is empty. So if the list is empty, that means there are no nodes present. Okay. So it will return a zero value. Okay, that is that means the number of nodes is equals to zero. And the case number two is if the list exists, then we have to count how many nodes are there. So one by one, we will consider both the cases. Okay, so suppose the return type of the function is integer. Okay, so for whatever function we have written, we have considered the return type was as void. Okay, but this time we are calling whenever the count function will get called. It is assumed that it will return the number of nodes present in the linked list. So, a number of nodes is nothing but an integer value. So that's why we are mentioning the return type of the count function as integer. Okay, so the return type of function is integer, and suppose the name of the function is count. Okay, now <clears throat> first we'll check whether the list is empty or not. Okay, so how to check that? We have to check the content of the head because you know that the head always contains the address of the first node. So if the content is null, head content is null, that means the first node is null, and if the first node is null, that means list doesn't exist. Okay, so we'll check first the content of the head of the linked list. So if head is equals to equals to null, okay, okay, if the head is equals to equals to null means what? List is empty. So we are making a command line over there. List is empty. Okay. So if the head content is null, we'll print a message. So print f new line. List is empty. And after printing this message, we'll return zero. Okay. Why? Because if the list is empty, that means there are no nodes present there, so it will return zero. That means there are zero nodes present there. So this is the if block, and it will get executed when the list is empty, and it will have its counter part that is the else block. Then else block means the list exists. So else block will be executed when the list exists. Okay. So first we will draw the figure. Okay. Then we will count the number of nodes. Okay. So let's have the figure first. Okay, so you have considered here four nodes. One, two, three, and four. Actually, there may be any number of nodes, but here we are considering four nodes. Okay, so this is the head pointer. Okay, so suppose the address of the first node is hundred, address of the second node is two hundred, address of the three, third node is three hundred, and address of the fourth node is four hundred. Okay, so you know that head will always contain the address of the first node. So head will contain the address of the first node. Which is hundred here, and data part. Suppose it is containing the integer value, so we'll store the integer value in the data part. Okay, so any valid data integer value is stored. So seven, eleven, then suppose it is eight, and it is suppose three. Okay, and hundred next node is two hundred, so hundred next part will contain two hundred. So two hundred next part is next node is three hundred, so two hundred next part will contain three hundred. And 300 next node is 400, so 300 next node is containing 400, and 400 is the last node. So you know that the last node next part always contains a null value in a linked list. Okay. So suppose there are uh, four nodes in there in the linked list. Now we have to count that how many nodes are there. So definitely the answer will be four. So how to proceed? So first we have to start from the beginning of the list. Okay. You know that whenever we are working with a linked list. It may be a single linked list or double linked list. We have to always start from the beginning of the list because we cannot jump to any other node. Why? The answer is very simple because only the address of the first node has been kept in the head. Okay, this is the only information we have been kept for the entire linked list. That's why we can start with the first node only. Okay, now to start from the first node, we have to declare the node pointer. So first we will declare the node pointer. So declaring struct node star temp. So temp is the node pointer. We have declared, and since we have to start from the beginning, that means from the first node, and since the 
first node address has been kept in head. So what you have to write? Head temp is equals to head. That means temp content will be the content of head and it is 100. That means temp content will also be 100. Okay, that simply means that temp is now pointing to the first node whose address is 100. Okay, now we have to check each and every node. Okay, that whether it is a valid node or not. If it is a valid node, we will count this node and we will shift the temp pointer from first node to second node, second node to third node, third node to fourth node and so on. So we have to traverse the entire list starting from the beginning. So we have already started from the beginning. Now we will execute the loop. So now before that, another thing you have to do that you have to declare a count variable. So which will actually keep counting the number of nodes. So we are also declaring a count variable for example C in C and we are initializing it by zero. Why? Because so far we have not counted a single node. So that's why the C has been initialized by zero. Okay. So now we are executing the loop. So we are executing a while loop. So while what we have to write temp not equals to null. That means in whichever node temp is pointing to, currently it is pointing to the first node. If it is not equals to null, that means it is a valid node, we will count it. Okay. So you check that current value of temp is 100 and if it is, it is not equals to null, it is a valid node. So what you have to do? We will count it. So what you have to do? We have to increment the count variable. So C++, C++ means what? C value will be incremented by the value 1. That means C will be C plus 1. Okay. Now after counting this node, then we have to shift the temp from first node to the second node. So for that, what do you have to know? Wait, what do we have to write? You know that you have to write temp is equals to temp arrow next. Okay. So temp arrow next means temp is now pointing to 100. You look at the node. So this is the next part of the temp. So temp arrow next value is equals to 200. So this is temp currently and this is your temp arrow next. I have told you in the previous video that if temp is pointing to the first node, temp arrow next is pointing to the second node because in the next part of the temp, we have stored the address of the next node that is 200. So temp is pointing to 100 and temp arrow next is pointing to 200. Okay, so current value of temp will be current value of temp arrow next which is 200. So temp will be shifted from first node to second node. Okay, so temp has been shifted from first. Now, this is the close of the while loop. Okay, so temp is now at node 200. So it will again check the content of the temp. Temp is 200 and you check 200 it is not equals to null. That means it is a valid node. So again C will be incremented. So what will be the value of? So first time it has been incremented. Now the value of C has become 2. First when it was at node number 1, it has been incremented from 0 to 1. Now after shifting from node number 1 to 2, you have checked that it is a valid node. Now C will be incremented again. That means two nodes we have counted so far. Now after counted this node, then temp will be shifted to its next node. Okay, so temp is equals to temp arrow next. Again temp value will be checked. It is 300 now. It is not equals to null. That means condition is true. So we will be inside the while loop. In the while loop, what will happen? The C's value will be incremented by 1. It was 2. So it will now be 2 plus 1. That is 3. Okay, that means so far we have counted 3 nodes and check the temp is now pointing to the third node. Okay, now after counting this node, we will shift the temp pointer to its next node. Okay, so temp is now pointing to 400. So now 400, it will be checked, it is not equal to null, that means it is also a valid node. So again, C values will be incremented, it will become 4 right now. Okay, then temp will be shifted. Now look at this. So temp value will now be temp arrow next. Now temp is pointing to 400 and what is the value of temp arrow next? This is the next part. So temp arrow next is equals to null. So now after executing this line temp is equals to temp arrow next, since the temp arrow next value is equals to null, so the new value of temp will be simply null. Okay. So now after executing this line, temp has become null. Then again, the condition of the loop will be checked and you check that we have given the condition if temp not equals to null, but temp has now become null. So what will happen? The condition will become false and we will be out of this loop. That means we have counted the last node of the list. Okay. So we have started from the beginning and we have counted each and every node one by one. And after counting, we have shifted the temp pointer. Okay. So we have traversed the entire list and finally we have counted all the nodes. Okay. So after that, what do you have to do? You have to just return the value of C. So outside the loop, you have to write return C. 
okay and that is the end of the um, uh, else block and that will be the end of the count function okay so in this way from last to first we have counted all the nodes of the single link list so my dear students i hope that you have understood the concept of count function of a single link list so thanks for watching please take care have a nice day